So this next lecture is section 2.3 of the textbook. It's uh, titled Motion Along an Incline. And uh, uh, the example here given is uh, about a skier uh, going down a hill. And uh, when you watch skiing on the Olympics, for example, it seems that um, these skiers are moving incredibly fast and uh, they're accelerating at a, uh, a limit that, that you're, you're really not familiar with or, or something that seem to, seems really, really fast for a human to be accelerating at. In reality, um, because the force that's actually moving the skier is the force of gravity, the, the skier will be accelerating at a rate that is always less than the acceleration of gravity. So the, the gravitational effect that's pulling this skier down to the earth um, because they're on an incline, it has a horizontal component or a component that is parallel to the uh, uh, to the surface that they are on top of. That horizontal component, that horizontal force of gravity, is what will be pulling them down. That will be giving their their acceleration due to their f g x equals m a. So, um, rearranging that equation, we'll find out what their horizontal acceleration is. Now looking at that skier, this is what the free body diagram would look like. So we have a normal force that is now perpendicular to the surface. So the normal force is not uh, directly in the um, opposite direction of Fg. The uh, skier will, will, um, uh, will, will feel a force of air resistance and a force of kinetic friction, of course. Um, these are going to be operating along um, an x-axis that is tilted. And the Fg, is, while it's operating down, and normally we would take that down to be in the y direction, because the surface is tilted, we set our y to be parallel, or sorry, perpendicular to the, uh, to the surface of the incline. So that down that the y I direction is in uh, will be at an angle. And with that angle, um, if we find, uh, we can break that Fg into components. Uh, Fg times cosine of theta, the angle, will give us our Fgy. And Fg times sine of theta will give us our Fgx. So this is something that's worth kind of uh, um, copying down. And just make sure you understand this, because it's um, uh, we could also solve this problem with the x and y in the normal directions that we usually put them in, but then everything would be at, at an angle, uh, with the exception of fg. So we draw it this way because only fg is at an angle, and we can easily break that into components to solve. So again, this slide here is just what I was kind of explaining. Um, uh, the acceleration, uh, sorry, what is what component of the gravitational force affects each of the following? So the acceleration down the incline. The fgx would be would be um, uh, in the direction of that acceleration. Uh, the fgy would would not be um, that would be in the uh, that would be parallel or perpendicular to it, so it would not be affecting it. Um, the force of friction, uh, the fgy, um, because that is uh, that has a, a, a component that is horizontal. Um, that would be affecting the force of friction. And uh, if the, it says the tension in a rope pulling an object up a ramp, uh, and that would be um, the FGX, because if it's pulling it, pushing it up a ramp, then that would be uh, um, in that direction of the incline. So since several forces in addition to the gravitational force can affect the motion on an incline plane, Free body diagrams are essential in solving incline plane problems. So make sure you're drawing the free body diagrams for these questions. For some problems, you'll see that I ask you to draw a free body diagram because it'll be marked on it. Other diagram or other problems, it's good to draw it just so that you're um, you fully understand the situation and are able to solve it. So here's a, a problem. It says you're holding a, an 85 kilogram trunk at the top of a ramp that slopes from a van to the ground. So it's on this ramp, and the angle with the ground is 35 degrees. You lose grip, and the trunk begins to slide. So a free body diagram of this situation would look something like this. Um, our FG is operating directly down. 
um, we're going to treat our Fn, uh, which will be at that angle, um, to be in our y direction, and our FF uh, will be on the incline. We're going to treat that as the x direction. And when we draw in um, everything here with our, um, with our xy axis, uh, we can see that the FG, that angle that, uh, that we have, that 35 degree slope that we had, um, will be equal to that 35 degree um, offset that FG is from. Um, from the, uh, the y direction. Uh, and we can break that FG into components. We have an FGX or FG parallel operating op uh, or opposing the FF, the force of friction. And we have FG perpendicular or FGY uh, that opposes the FN. Now another thing about that FN, the FN is, is going to be equal to FGY, not equal to FG in a situation like this. So lastly, uh, it says if the coefficient of friction is 0 0.42, what is the acceleration of the truck? And I will show you how to solve this on the paper. So for this problem, our, our FGX um, will be the mass 85 uh, times the, um, the component uh, in the x direction, the sine 35, times our a, which is 9.8. That gives us 478. That's our fgx. And our fgy is 85 times 9.8 times cosine 35, which is 682. So um, the, if you recall, this is what our free body diagram looks like again. I'll just redraw it quickly. That's our, our, our box. This is our fg. But we're not really interested in the fg so much as we're interested in its components, fgy. FGX, FF, and FN. Now, our FN is an opposing force, and it is its magnitude is always equal to uh, the force of gravity, in this case, FGY. So we know our FN is going to be about 682 newtons. Now, our FF, force of friction, is mu times FN. And we know our mu, our, our coefficient of kinetic friction, is 0 0.42. So our Fn is 682. Um, if we multiply these two together, 682 times 0.42, we get uh, 287 newtons. Now I used the exact value, not 682. So I used uh, 682.34. Um, and I ended up with 286.588, and I rounded that up to 287. Uh, because I'm still in the middle of a calculation, I'm going to keep that extra information. Normally, I could go back and look and see that there are two significant digits in this problem and, and solve for that. Uh, and but uh, that's only when I'm reporting my final answer. Now lastly, to find my A, we have F equals MA, and our force um, in the uh, our F here is our Fx. So our force in the X is equal to Fgx minus Ff minus that force of friction. And our M is 85 and our A we'll have to solve for. So rearranging for this A equals 85, sorry, um, let me redo this one. A equals uh, FGX, which was 478, minus FF, which is eight, 287, rather, divided by 85. So 478 minus 287 divided by 85. I end up with. Uh, 2 point, I didn't use the exact values here, but 2.247. So I'm at 2.2 meters per second squared. Now let me just see if I had the exact values in, uh, I end up getting something similar. So um, some, this is what I would use for my answer. I know in the, your slide it says 2.3 meters per second squared. Now, uh, 
On the next slide, it does say um, if the trunk slides 1.3 meters before reaching the bottom of the ramp, what, uh, for what time interval did it slide? I won't go through this because we've done this a lot, but we know our A, we know our VI is 0 meters per second. We know our, um, our D is 1.3 meters. Um, so you need to find an equation. I'll let you do this on your own. You need to find an equation that solves for T uh, using A, V, I, and D, and simply uh, substitute those values in, um, and that's what you'll, you'll have. Uh, let me switch back to the computer screen here. And um, for this next problem, it says there's a boy pulling on a sled with a rider. The combined mass of them is 82 kilograms, and they're going up an, uh, an angle of 6.5 degrees at a steady speed. Um, so the coefficient of kinetic friction between the sled and the snow is 0 0.1. And uh, we're asked to find the uh, free body diagram, and then we have to resolve Fg into its components. And then lastly, we have to find the tension in the rope. So I'm going to do all of that with you and show you how that calculation works out. Uh, let me just turn this off. Okay, so um, our first part of this question says that um, we have this boy who's pulling a sled up with a rider. So we can just consider this as a box right now. Um, we have an applied force along our x-axis. We're going to call that our x. We have an FG that goes down. This gets brought up into an FGY and an FGX. So this FGX is going to be opposing that applied force. And we have an FN like that. So um, the angle between here, that angle is equal to 6.2 degrees. So what we would do in order to uh, um, to solve for this, we have to find the tension in the rope, which is the rope of the FA. Uh, it also says to uh, break these up, but we're going to have to do that to solve that anyway. So we're trying to find out what is the what is the FA in this case, because he's pushing it at a steady speed. Steady speed implies that FA is equal to FGX. So in that, if that's the case, that means that what we need to do is uh, find out what our FGX is, um, and that'll help us find our FA. Uh, but we also have to consider that um, uh, there is friction as well. So I forgot to add that in. FGX, also in that direction, we have an FF that's opposing that as well. Now, um, our FF uh, would have to be uh, found using our FN, which is equal to our FGY. So let's find FGY first. It's going to be um, the mass um, times the acceleration for gravity uh, times s cosine, in this case, of the angle. So we have our mass was 82. Our A, um, uh, is 9.8, and our cosine is 6.2 degrees. Let me just quickly calculate this. 82 times 9.8 times 6.2, and find cosine of that. We end up with uh, 799 newtons for our FGY. Um, that is equal to our Fn. And our FF is going to be mu times FN, which is going to be 0 0.1 times 799. So this will be 79.9 newtons. I'll keep the extra uh, decimal point. Um, so that's our FF. Our uh, F net in the x is equal to FF uh, plus FGx. Uh, or rather, um, uh, this would be our our x in the um, uh, in the downward direction, down the slope. Um, 
I could also consider that it is f net would be this value um, subtracted by uh, f a, which is what I have to solve for. So, um, so the negative of this plus f a or f a minus f f minus f g x, um, because it is not moving, we have an f net x of zero, and that means that. F A, so this is what this would look like, F A minus F F plus F G X. So F A equals F F plus F G X. That gives us 79.9 um, .9 plus 82 times 9.8. Oops, I didn't realize I was off the screen there. Times sine of 6.2 degrees. And this works out to 6.2 sine. Um, I end up with 166 uh, or 167 newtons. And because I had two significant digits, I can round to 170 newtons.